Okay, so now we're going to look at um, the paratonsillar abscess. Uh, and the paratonsillar abscess, um, it's known also as Quincy. Uh, so first of all, what is Quincy um, and, you know, wh where is the paratonsillar area located? Uh, so here's a uh, little diagram. Uh, right here, we have, this is your tonsil, and this is the superior constrictor muscle. This area right here is called the paratonsillar area. So paratonsillar uh, abscess is basically when an abscess is formed here. Uh, and that's just the uh, simplest definition. Now, uh, why does it happen? The most common reason is going to be after tonsillitis. And so what happens is um, you get some, you know, the patient gets uh, tonsillitis uh, here, and then it forms some type of intratonsillar abscess, and then it leaks out into the uh, paratonsillar area, creating a paratonsillar abscess. However, that's not always the case. Uh, sometimes it can arrive uh, de novo. Now, what are the symptoms? Uh, let's kind of take a quick look at the symptoms. Now, what you'll notice is the symptoms are going to be very similar to tonsillitis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show, I'm going to kind of separate all the symptoms that are similar to tonsillitis and then all the ones that kind of distinguish paratonsillar abscess separately. The first one that you that, that uh, occurred both in Quincy and tonsillitis is the odynophagia. In both of them you have uh, pain while you swallow. Also, you're going to get the halitosis the same way. Um, and you get the fever, and of course, with the fever, all the constitutional symptoms, weakness, headache, fatigue, uh, all that. However, um, just to make a note here, it's going to be much, much worse. Uh, the fever will be, you know, uh, higher. The symptoms will be much worse. Um, and um, finally, we have earache. So these are the, the symptoms that are similar to tonsillitis. Now, what are the symptoms that kind of distinguish Quincy, well, the first thing is going to be um, the hot potato voice. This is going to be a kind of muffled voice, uh, you know, and they have real difficulty talking and a lot of pain. And actually, this is usually unilateral, and so they tend to get unilateral throat pain, uh, which is not seen that commonly in um, tonsillitis. Uh, the other one that's going to be very, uh, that will really distinguish it is trismus and torticollis. And basically, uh, what is this? This is going to be decreased range of motion of the jaw, and this is decreased range of motion of the neck. And again, in this area, you know, you have your mandible right there. And actually here, um, the reason why you get the jaw is because it actually um, irritates the pterygoid muscle. Uh, and, and that's why you have these jaw symptoms. Now, um, also on examination, you're also going to get some features that are similar to tonsillitis and then other features which help to distinguish uh, Quincy from tonsillitis. So what's similar? Uh, you get that uh, hyperemia of the pillar, uh, the you know soft palate, and the uvula. Now the big thing that distinguishes it, uh, Quincy, is going to be... okay is going to be that the fact that the uvula is pushed. And so here I have a... Uh, so this is um, what the uh, throat would look like. And what you can see, uh, what you can see here is the uvula is pushed towards that side. Okay, and also if you notice, this isn't the tonsil. This is kind of like in front or just you know, a side of the tonsil. Uh, and that's going to be a big feature. Um, other uh, tonsillitis, you won't see that at all. Okay, and finally, um, you know, patient has, you, you know, that diagnosed Quincy. Uh, how do you treat it? Um, first thing is you do need to admit these patients uh, into the hospital. They need to be admitted uh, and you need to give them IV fluids. Uh, again, this is much more serious. They're going to be much more toxic looking, you know. Um, and then you're going to do incision and drainage. This is an abscess, so you know, that's pretty much how you treat an abscess. Um, and then, you know, you're going to give them analgesic. 
uh, and uh, antibiotics. And it's also a good idea when you do the drainage to do culture sensitivity. And then finally, you know, four to six weeks later, uh, you can do an interval tonsillectomy. And so that is Quincy.